I thought, let's go ahead and pick back up the series of videos I used to do called the most the fragrances that I'm wearing the most. So today, I've got 10 fragrances here that I'm enjoying and wearing a lot lately. New pickups, fragrances that I uh, discovered brand new or either are released brand new or there's some classics here that I am just now getting that I'm enjoying. So today, find out about 10 fragrances, but there is a bonus fragrance after the outro. So if you wanna find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up this series. Uh, I used to do, uh, do it once a month. Uh, seven fragrances that I was enjoying the most uh, wearing that particular month. I'm gonna make it a video of 10 fragrances. But as I said today, I have one bonus fragrance as well. And as I said, these are fragrances that I'm enjoying a lot lately. Either I just picked them up, either they were just released, or older ones that I just discovered that I had to get, things like that. So I'll let you know what they are, but before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So we'll start off right off the bat with the first one. And uh, a lot of these fragrances I have boxes for and I, they're in the boxes. Some of them I don't have their boxes around. So I've got them, uh, you know, out, out, out of the bottle, uh, out of the box. But the first one is one that I spoke about earlier this uh, week uh, about um, fragrances that are created for Frederick Mall from uh, Dominic Ropian. Geranium Pomisio. Yeah, this was one that I did not really gravitate towards early on. Uh, because I found the mint note in here to be a little too toothpaste-y. So I think I started getting familiarized with it and now I'm accepting it and enjoying the, the toothpaste-y minty qualities and the fact that it doesn't live too long because the fragrance after all is about geranium but along the way you'll also experience some aniseed so that licorice touch is in there as well. But Geranium Paul Monsieur is a aromatic fragrance with lots of aromatic touches. Of course, the mint and geranium are aromatic. It's aromatic, spicy, and woody as well. Mint, aniseed, geranium, cloves, sandalwood, benzoin, frankincense. So it settles to a slightly ambery base, but it's mostly an aromatic, spicy, woody fragrance. Uh, and of course, the geranium is the star here. And I've mentioned this in the past. I actually have a video on geranium fragrances. A lot of you asked me why I didn't feature this. You know, since that video, I... Um, I decided to go ahead and accept, uh, the, appreciate the, the fragrance a little more, I, especially since this actually I, I ended up getting as a deal with a friend who was getting rid of her, uh, some of her fragrances from uh, Frederick Mall. And this, along with three others that I did not own from this house, I ended up picking up. Stay tuned for that video of three or, uh, three or four fragrances from uh, this house that I know, haven't speak to, spoken about. But uh, I am enjoying this one. I'm getting past that toothpaste qualities and I quite like uh, what I'm smelling. And I do enjoy geranium. And one thing I should also say about geranium is geranium already has light minty qualities and also has rosy nuances as well. So I, I, I think perhaps maybe they're not really using the mint note here. It is just coming off of the geranium, but most likely it is, especially if it's toothpaste -y. And one other thing I should say about geranium, Paul Monsieur, this is the second geran geranium focused fragrance that Frederick Mall has. They just came out with, uh, not just about two years ago, with uh, Rose and Queer. It is focusing on geranium once again. And that geranium is uh, acting, um, uh, giving off the rosy nuances, like they're kind of pulling out the rosiness of the geranium. And along the way with that fragrance, you can get a little bit of the mintiness as well. But that one actually, you don't get that toothpaste touch. Here you do, you still do, but I'm over it, I'm, I'm digging it. Uh, let me know if you guys get toothpaste qualities with Geranium Paul Monsieur, like I do. Some of you don't, I do. Anyway, Geranium Paul Monsieur from the house of uh, Frederick Mall. This next fragrance is a new launch from the house of uh, Gallagher Fragrances. This is Overt. This is it right here in the box. So Overt is another great release from uh, from the house of uh, Gallagher Fragrances. And I think I wasn't really the biggest fan of the earlier releases, but now he's done some really, really great fragrances. And this, along with the several others, like the Patchouli, the Rosé All Day, the, 
the Chocolate Tonka one. All really, really solid releases that I, I really enjoy wearing. And this one doesn't disappoint either. For me, this is a very lemony experience. You got sweet, tart, lemony experience here with lots of lemons, mandarin. There's vetiver. It's very, very grassy vetiver though. Earthy too. There's sea salt, cardamom, ambergris, musk, ambrette, and lime. So it's a very, very fresh but oomphy kind of a fragrance you can wear in the summertime. Um, really, really beautiful actually. I love the contrast of the citruses with the vetiver. And again, it's a vetiver that's not really heavy, uh, although the fragrance has great longevity for me. It, it does linger on, uh, but it's not one of the more screamer fragrances from this house that are like really intense. It is a freshy after all. And the fact that it has the musks under there as well, the fragrance does have great longevity uh, for in a perfect uh, wear for warm days. I think this is really, really a great solid fragrance. I mean, this style of fragrance is nothing new. It's been done over and over again, but he's done a great job, I think, with this one. Overt from Gallagher Fragrances. If you're looking for a great new fresh fragrance with some substance to it, with some, you know, grassy, woody, earthy touches to it, then definitely try Overt from Gallagher fragrances. So the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is a fragrance house I haven't spoken about at all in the past. Last week I took a trip to ZGO Perfumery here in San Francisco and even though I knew that they had just brought on this brand, uh, I actually explored the brand a little there. And the fragrances uh, are really, really great from this house. There's only four. It's an indie niche house with all natural perfumery. The house is called Sigil, and this is Anima Mundi. As soon as I smelled this fragrance, I was like, wow, that smells so good. So, so good. And uh, it's a little house, uh, you know, a tiny little uh, house that doesn't uh, have a lot of exposure but uh, this Anime Mundi is really, really beautiful. It's a jasmine and rose combination with Hinoki, tuberose, and immortelle. So you gotta like white flowers to appreciate this one, but I think it's to die for gorgeous. This is what the bottle looks like. The cap is really, really nicely done. Kind of Art Deco-ish. I don't know if you guys know this brand and uh, their fragrances. Uh, here's the box. It's fairly new for me. Uh, I've never spoken about them, but I'm really, really enjoying this particular fragrance. Again, all natural perfumery I have a love-hate relationship with. Uh, this actually, for all natural perfumery, it's amazing. I think it's really, really great. I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Uh, I highly recommend it, especially if you like white flowers that smell authentic, and the combination of the jasmine and the rose together is to die for. So, Sigil, Anima Mundi, uh, check it out. Um, I do have a discount code at uh, ZGO Perfumery. You can search one of my videos and get that discount code if you guys uh, ever visit ZGO Perfumery. I actually bought two fragrances when I was there. The other one is here as well, but the next one is not that other one. This is Vacation by Vacation, uh, a fun fragrance. I first read an article about this fragrance and I immediately rushed out and bought it. Blind, completely blind because I didn't know anything about it, but the concept, their website, everything about the fragrance was really, really fun. Quirky, campy, kitschy, uh, all about kind of like the 80s themed beach setting. Uh, very, very interesting. So Vacation by Vacation is a beautiful uh, summer uh, vacation, uh, tropical island getaway kind of a fragrance in a bottle. Lots of coconut here, but the notes are coconut, sunscreen, swimsuit, lycra, pool water. You know, I do get, I do get some sandy touches. I do get some other floral touches in here as well, but they've really captured the 80s kind of theme and of course the beach theme. Like just imagine a very, very hot, humid day. I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning the East Coast, not the West Coast here. I could also like, you know, visualize Florida perhaps uh, because, you know, California doesn't really, I mean, we do have heat here, but our water is really, really cold. So I'm, I'm visualizing more East Coast uh, beaches and things like that. Just their whole ad campaign, that's what I got from it. But the fragrance itself is really, really fun. If you like coconutty fragrances, I highly recommend you try it uh, and check out their website. It's really, really uh, engaging, I should say. So Vacation by Vacation, uh, a great scent for the coconut fragrance lover. This is a 30 ml, once again, just like the Sigil 
fragrance. I kind of like 30 ml bottles, but then again, I don't. You know, I have a love-hate relationship with the, the size. I want the biggest size, but then again, uh, 30 ml here is 60, $60, $65, dollars, so it's not going to break the bank. And it comes in a, kind of a beautiful box like this. And the packaging was really, really a, a very interesting as well, the way they delivered it. Anyway, Vacation by Vacation, a great, fun, Fragrance for the coconut the beachy fragrance lover. The next one I'm talking about is a fragrance I recently did a video on uh, from the House of Chanel. This is Paris Edinburgh. This one right here from the Les O collection of fragrances. And I'm really, really digging this one. I think it's one of the, m the better ones out of the collection. And actually, since I've been wearing it and I did a ranked video recently and along with the review for this, I think it's actually kind of moved up a little, a little further now too. It could be at number two. But it's really, really great. I mean, I enjoy the, 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 the nuances of the different notes in here perfectly together. And even though it's like supposed to be a fresh fragrance, there's some depth to it with the notes. Lots of juniper berry here, cypress, vetiver. But I also get bergamot, perhaps some geranium lavender, maybe some light citruses, uh, perhaps some bergamot and things like that in here as well. But a, an overall great scent. And it's a simplistic fragrance, but yet also complex because the notes they're using are kind of deep rich woody earthy uh, aromatic kind of notes but yes I do get the I do get the citruses in here there's got to be some uh, bergamot in here because I can pick it up and I'm smelling it and it blends beautifully with all those other notes I think it's a really really great release um, 120 ml I think it is or 125 uh, it's eau de toilette concentration you can liberally spray this stuff the only part of problem with that is because it is on the light side you will need to liberally spray but as far as the smell goes I think it's really really great so Chanel Paris Edinburgh I think is great after the disappointing Paris Riviera which I did not care for this is really really great what um, Olivier Polge has done to the the latest uh, Lezo collection fragrance so Chanel Paris Edinburgh great scent so the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is the other fragrance I picked up and bought from ZGO Perfumery last week when I took a visit there with Dahlia. If you haven't caught my photos, uh, I'm, it, they're on Instagram. So the second fragrance I bought there is Unuit Nomad's Jardin de Misfa. I don't know if you guys know this house, a smaller house. I first discovered this house in Paris in the early part of 2019. I Instagrammed about it. I thought their fragrances were great. Um, I should actually show you the box. It comes in and of course this. Um, great, and I love the box, and also love the, the you know the bottles. They're very simplistic, masculine-looking bottles. I love that about it. And Jardin de Misfa is this gorgeous, beautiful saffron-forward, Middle Eastern-styled, ambery fragrance with dates and almonds. Beautiful, beautiful combination. And this one, in the heat, it's even better. There's some light humidity out there. The fragrance blooms a lot more. But notes of uh, dates, almonds, rose, saffron, cardamom, nutmeg. Beautiful combination of notes. I love it. It's a spicy, aromatic, warm, ambery floral fragrance. You know, the dates and the dates adds the ambery touches for me here. And then of course, almonds touch uh, gives it a little bit of a nutty gourmand touch. But the rose is pretty prominent in the saffron with its aromatic spiciness and also the leathery undertones. Beautiful, really, really beautiful fragrance. I kept smelling myself and I was thinking, God, I smell great with this one. As soon as you spray it on, it uh, just blooms. And you know, I should also say there is a little bit of a light berry like fruity touch. Uh, I think it opens up more when you're wearing it rather than when you're smelling it out of the bottle. But a wonderful fragrance, Unuit Nomad Jardin de Misfa, or Jardins de Misfa. Uh, beautiful fragrance, and I think this is a great house. Uh, if you don't know this house, check them out. And as I said, uh, I bought this from ZGO Perfumery, and there is a discount code. I'm not sure it applies uh, on all fragrances. I think it did apply on these. And I'll put the discount code in the info box if you guys ever wanted to buy anything from ZGO Perfumery. All right, the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is an older fragrance. This is probably the only old fragrance here. This is from the House of Loewe. This is Essenzia EDT. Not the EDP, but the, ED, but the EDT. Boy, ever since I did my video on the Loewe collection of fragrances, I've really started enjoying this particular fragrance. And in that video, if you haven't caught that, please go catch it. Uh, I highlight five fragrances from Loewe. This was one of them. And also the EDP, which has nothing to do with the EDT. They're completely different fragrances. 
the EDT to me is such a gorgeous aromatic fougere fragrance. Reminds me of more modern fragrances, even though this came out in the late 80s, I believe that's what it says, but it smells really, really modern to me with classic leaning touches. If you like a great fougere, this really doesn't disappoint. A lot of people say this reminds them of Polo in the green bottle. I agree and I do not agree. For me, this kind of reminds me of Polo, but it also reminds me of something like Houbegant's Fougere Royale, Tom Ford's Beau de Jour, things like that. More uh, things like that. Because Polo, to me, even though I believe it's a Fougere, no, it's not a Fougere, it's a Chypre fragrance with leathery touches. And I don't get much leather with, with this. It does have leather, but it's not quite leathery as uh, the, the, you know, Ralph Lauren's Polo is. And the fact that Ralph Lauren's Polo also is so reformulated, maybe that's why it's not reminding me of the current version of Polo, but... Uh, m much different for me when I'm testing them side by side and it mostly re uh, reminds me of something like a combination of Beau de Jour, Houbegans, Fougere Royale, maybe a few other Fougere fragrances combined. But this being its original kind of a scent, even though it reminds you of those kind of Fougeres, it does have its more original qualities. Great scent. Really, really great scent. I love it. It does have that kind of also Irish spring soap kind of a thing. And one more, I th one more thing I should say. It also lightly hints at something like Rogue Perfumery's Mousse Illumine. Uh, very lightly. Mousse Illumine is a Chypre fragrance, I believe. Polo, uh, the green bottle, is also a Chypre. This being an aromatic fougere with a cheaper kind of uh, leanings. And I think it's the oak moss that's doing that for me. The oak moss in here is reminding me of the oak moss in Mousse Illumine. Great green fragrance, really, really digging it. If you don't know this one, check it out. Although the brand has just redone all their bottles, so they're all uniform bottles now, so this might not be the bottle that you end up getting. Uh, and I don't know if they're, they're reformulated or not, uh, but they have put all their fragrances in uniform, rectangular, thin bottles. But check it out, a great scent. Don't go for the EDP because it doesn't smell anything like the EDP. The EDP smells like an Aventus type of a scent to me in comparison to this. So I don't understand how they can call that an EDP. I would assume that they would make an EDP of the original scent, but they haven't done that. Anyway, Loewe Essencia EDT, a great, great scent. Now this next one is a fragrance I've had in my collection for a while. I had just put it aside and never really pulled for it much. I did include it in a few uh, videos here and there. But recently I pulled it because of a lot of you were saying this is a major beast mode fragrance. I do agree. This is really, really intensely beast mode. Uh, it is also reminding me of things like Molecule 2, Baccarat Rouge, 540, Another 13, Not a Perfume Superdose. I'm talking about Thomas Cosmala's number 4, Après L'Amour. Boy, it's intense. This is the kind of fragrance that will blind your nose if you overspray. So a little goes a long way with this one. It's overly musky. And even though they don't credit ambroxin and things like that, I do get lots of ambroxin here. What they do say they have is musk amber, woods, aromatic spices, lemon zest, orange blossom. Now the aromatic spices uh, could refer to saffron. I am picking up saffrony touches in here. So there is that. Um, and I'm picking up lots of ambroxin. So maybe their amber is basically is the ambroxin or maybe the musk is because ambroxin is musky but either way it's an overdose of ambroxin for me and again nose blind blindingly intense so if you like it intense and you like fragrances like baccarat rouge one other thing i should say it also reminds me a little bit of instant crush from mancera but either way if you like fragrances like mancera's instant crush baccarat rouge 540 another 13 you know what else molecule 2 not a perfume super Superdose, definitely recommend this one. Really, really great scent, but you know, it's an ambroxin. And if you like ambroxin, you're gonna have to check this one out because it does not disappoint with its intensity. So that Thomas Com Cosmala, number four, Après L'Amour, really, really great scent. Really do think it's great. The next fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about is from a house called Atelier Materi and it's Narcisse Taiji. So I don't know if you guys know this house. I've uh, featured a lot of their fragrances in different videos. This is their latest and I'm really, really digging this one as uh, a fragrance featuring uh, Narcissus. 
So let me show you the bottle, how beautiful it is, and the, uh, the actual um, cap as well. Very heavy, uh, a special kind of a, um, material they use to create this, and this is the fragrance right here. So, beautiful fragrance focusing on Narcissus, it's an interesting flower. Um, one thing I should say that, about this is if you like something like uh, the minerally touches and uh, Narcissus touches of Hermes H24, you should check this one out because the Narcissus here reminds me of the Narcissus in that fragrance. But other than that, the fragrance don't, doesn't smell very much alike. But this fragrance has a lot more depth and substance to it in comparison to the Hermes. So if you like Hermes' H24, definitely check this one out and see what you think uh, in comparison. Because to me, when I was wearing it, it was reminding me of... Um, H24, but when I compared them side by side, then I realized they're completely different scents, except for that Narcissus note in the fragrance hints at it. But beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Uh, I'm going to do a video on this house very soon. Stay tuned for that. But if you're looking for something very unique, because Narcissus is not a very popular flower. It's not a white flower. It's a yellow flower. It does have different characteristics in comparison to, uh, you know, tuberose or, you know, those kind of white flowers, gardenia, uh, jasmine, things like that. But this features lots of narcissus, patchouli, musk, leather, hay, pear, tuberose, ginger. So lots of great notes here. Very, very unique fragrance, but really, really beautiful to wear. Narcisse Taiji. Check it out if you don't know it. And I found out that this fragrance or the brand is now actually selling at Lucky Scent as well. So they're going to be very easy to uh, get uh, the fragrances. So anyway, Narcisse Taiji from the house of Atelier Materi is a great, great scent uh, for you to try. And the last fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about today is from the house of Byredo, the one I'm enjoying the most, and it is Mixed Emotions, this one right here. Now, Mixed Emotions was not a love at first sniff. In fact, I was given a sample, and I started wearing it. First initial blast, very, very um, odd. I didn't care for it. It's a little off-putting at first, but I kept wearing it, and it started sweetening up on me, and I was enjoying it. I ended up with this very, very, a bizarre smell up top, very, very off-putting, as I said, kind of like greens and forest and earth together, smoky at the same time, and then it developed and became the sweet tea fragrance that uh, is very chameleon-esque, like goes from one uh, to another, like uh, throughout the lifetime of the fragrance. So that's why I ended up with the fragrance because I, I'm enjoying it. I love tea and fragrances and this is a very very unique tea. It's more unique up top but once you know it starts selling and set, settling down it becomes a little more familiar but still a very very smoky very realistic high-end kind of a tea like if you go to a tea house they bring you like these very very interesting teas that's the kind of tea this is not the kind that you put it from a tea bag into a, a cup and experience it that's not the kind of tea I'm getting here but very very high-end very very smoky and I would go to the extent of saying something more like an Asian but very very high-end quality teas uh, from from Asia, uh, I would uh, I would visualize this tea, but it's beautiful. It has lots of black currant, mate, tea, birch, papyrus, violet leaf. So all those notes that I read, black currant. There is a fruity touch. Mate is the green touch that you're getting here. It's a tea note, but there's also regular tea here and birch. Birch is giving us the smokiness. I think birch always does. It's a woody note, and then the violet leaf note comes in, gives us like ozonic watery touches and then the papyrus, uh, you know, accentuating those notes as well. But really, wonderful scent, uh, fruity tea, but very, very smoky, dark. And again, that first smell could be off-putting or the blast because it's a little odd when you first smell it, but it grows on you and you end up enjoying it. Some people say they hate it. I recently posted about it on Instagram. I, there were some reactions about hating the fragrance, but you know, tastes are different, but I'm definitely digging this one. Mixed emotions from Byredo, definitely bottle worthy for me. And that's the end of the list today. As I said, I'm gonna be doing this type of video at least once a month. Uh, fragrances I'm enjoying really a lot lately because I no longer will be providing videos for uh, the place that I used to provide videos 
for so I have more space for other videos now. Uh, but let me know if you're a fan of these fragrances. Let me know if you've heard these brands. What do you think about them? Put a comment down so I can find out which fragrances are you enjoying most. Let me know. I'd like to check in to them and see what they are all about. Other than that, guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. I'm glad you stuck around for the bonus fragrance and even though I've spoken a lot about this fragrance I'm going to go ahead and feature it here because I'm really digging it. I featured this at number two for my Dominic Ropi on Top 20 Fragrances video. It's Vanna Gloria from Laboratorio Olfativo. If you haven't gotten your nose on this one, I think it's really, really a great scent. He did a great job with this one. That's why it ended up in number two. I love, I'm loving the contrast of the vanilla with the incense here and the olibanum. Lots of resinous touches, lots of incense-y smoky touches, beautifully contrasted with vanilla, but there's also tonka, saffron, and musk here, and maybe a very, very light fruity touch in there as well, but not very prominent for me. But really beautiful fragrance wears beautifully it lasts a long time but you gotta love contrast there you gotta love the smoky resinous incense note uh, with the uh, olibanum with that sweet vanilla and then it turns out to be not necessarily a gourmand but like a gourmand light because the vanilla is toned down the sweetness is toned down and it's uh you know enhanced with uh, you know the resins and the smoky incense note what a wonderful fragrance this is a great fragrance a bonus fragrance for you guys if you haven't uh, watched uh, my Dominic Ropion fragrances video where I featured this at number two please go catch that there's also a full review of this one if you haven't caught that please go catch it there is a USA giveaway in that video of sample sets of uh, Laboratorio Olfativo fragrances to subscribers of this channel from the USA anyway thank you so much have a good one goodbye